In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I built a lead research and qualifying AI agent inside of an intent that starts with a form that the lead would fill out with their name, email, and company website. Then we use an AI agent to do extensive research. Then we score the lead. Then we add them to our CRM before sending an email to our team based on the type of lead that we get. And in case it's your first time here, my name is Michele and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. So I'm gonna show you everything step by step. And if you stick around until the end, I'll even show you how you can get the whole system for free. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so this right here is a full workflow and it has four different steps with two different AI agents. I'm gonna press execute workflow to start the actual process. I'm gonna put my full name, Michele Torti, company domain, let's put my website. Yep, all good. And then my LinkedIn profile, so LinkedIn, and I can go to my profile and I can get the URL right here and I can paste it here. And now I can press start research. When I press start research, what it does is that it goes to the first AI agent, which is a lead and company research agent. So this is the thing that we use to actually do in-depth research, which means that it goes inside the website, inside the LinkedIn, it looks at the name, and it pretty much finds any information out there in the internet about this company and person and gives you a full detailed report. And as you can see here, we're using two perplexity tools, one for the actual research mainly on the website and the other one using the LinkedIn. And the reason why we're actually looping around and around is because of the fact that we're doing multiple pieces of research. So as you can see here, we have about five and it's because we're not only doing research on one aspect of the actual company, but multiple aspects of the company. Once this is done, it sends it to the next AI agent, which scores the lead out of 70. And then finally it adds it to our CRM and then we get an email at the end. And the CRM looks like this. And as we can see here, we have the date, the email, the name of the company, whether the person is a decision maker or not, it's true. In this case, company name, revenue, which in this case is not publicly disclosed, but it estimates that it's about one to 10 employees. Then we have the interest summary, which is again, what do they actually do based on the website? Then we have potential company solutions, which is based on what I do with my company, how can I help well, obviously my company. So because we work in the AI sector and we help companies implement AI, then obviously it tells us to integrate AI powered lead qualification or outreach system, which is pretty ironic considering that's what we're doing today. Um, but CRMs, project management, lead generation, content creation, and email automation. And of course, if you wanna change this to what you guys do, then obviously we'll look at the prompt that we give the AI agent. You can simply just switch out what you do. And then finally we have a score. Now the score again is out of 100 that we use. And in this case, because it's a lead that has a score of 65, we get an email saying that it's a warm lead. So warm lead, score 65. And we get all the information, which is company, lead name, monthly revenue, AI interest, and recommended solutions. Now the format of this is not perfect. And we also have to delete the N10 attribution. That's what this is called, which is where N10 just puts themselves into your email. Of course, the format of this is not perfect. So we're gonna tweak that in the actual workflow. So that right there is exactly how it works. Let's go to the first step, which is the N10 form. So this is where a potential lead will fill out the form. And the form itself, as you can see here, when I press execute step, it will ask us for our name, our company domain, and LinkedIn profile URL. Now in this case, I should have put required for all three, but it's only required for the company domain as of right now. And it's gonna ask us for our full name, company domain, and LinkedIn profile URL which when I submit, it goes here, right? And we have this set up using the form title, form description, and then we start adding the form elements, which are the questions that we ask the person to fill out uh, when using the form. And in this case, the full name will be full name. The element will be text area. We can change this to text because text area is when you wanna put some sort of paragraph, not a very small sentence. In this case, because it's just a full name, it's gonna be a small sentence. Uh, I mean, one sentence. I can put this as required because we need this company domain and placeholder as well is something that they see before they fill it out, right? So if I see that I have to fill out a company domain and on the actual answer, I see as an example, example.com, then it gives me an idea as to what to fill out. And then we have LinkedIn profile URL, which again is the text field and the placeholder will be LinkedIn profile URL, which is optional. Now it's optional because not everyone has LinkedIn. So the lead can decide whether to add it or not. Now, once this is done, we can see here that we have the output, which is full name, company domain, profile URL and the date of submission, we can go to the next step, which is the lead and company research agent. So we can see here that this is connected to two different tools, which are done for research using perplexity. And as we can see here, we have the user prompt, which is giving it the company domain, the full name and the LinkedIn profile URL, which is something that changes with every single lead form submission. And then we have the system message. So if I go here, we can see that this is a pretty in-depth prompt, very detailed. And the way it actually works is if I go up here, we have the overview, so you're saying, hey, you're an expert lead intelligence analyst specializing in AI agency sales and implementation readiness, 
because that's what we do. So obviously, if your company is different, then you would substitute this. And then we start giving it instructions. So research tools and mandatory usage, internal data sources to use, core analytics tasks, and a bunch more other stuff that it uses for the actual research. And so at the end, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get the whole system for free. So you can take this whole prompt and use it for yourself. Um, and you can have it right here. And so with this prompt, we are able to then do the research, which gives us the output, which is date, email, lead name, JM Solutions, which is the company name, which I didn't give it, right? Uh, monthly revenue, which in this case it can't find, and align interest, which is JM Solutions shows strong AI interest focus on workflow automations. And what this is, is basically a way for us to understand whether the company itself is interested in what we do. And then finally, we have potential company solutions. And the potential company solutions is what can we provide the company with? How can we help them? And it gives us a few ideas here. And then we have decision maker true or false. If it's true, that means this person right here who filled out the form is the decision maker of the company. If not, then it's going to be false. And this right here, of course, is connected to its brain, which is the LLM, which is OpenAI, which you can connect up here. Create a new credential. You can go to platform.openai.com. You can go to the dashboard. You can go to API keys and right here. You can create a new one and then copy and then paste it here and you'll be good to go. And then we have two different tools. The first one is perplexity research tool. And this right here is a tool that's used when we are researching the company. And in this case, we're researching the company website by giving it the company domain. And so to actually connect your perplexity, you have to go to create a new credential. And this tool is used to be able to research the actual company uh, website, right? Not the actual LinkedIn, just the company website. And so the first step here is actually connecting your account so you can go to create a new credential. You can go to perplexity.ai. And if it's your first time hearing about perplexity, perplexity, it's sort of like chat GPT, but it's well known for research, right? And so you want to go down to account, go to APIs, go to API and billing down here. And you're going to have to add credits first. So add money because it's not free, of course, but it only realistically takes about 0.001 cents. And then if you go to API keys, you can create a new secret key. So accept, put a name, so I can put test and then you will have the key right here that you can copy. Once it's copied, you can go back here and you can paste it here and you'll be able to connect your account. Once this is done, this will be set manually. The description will be message and model in perplexity. Just leave it as a default. Uh, the operation, which is what is the action that we're taking is messaging a model. The model that we're using is called Sonar. Sonar is a pretty good model. It doesn't take too long, but also is very good at research. And then here we give it two different types of prompts. One is a system prompt, which is what is the identity? And in this case, we're just toggling this on, which means that we're telling AI, hey, you decide the system prompt. And the other one is a text prompt. Now the text prompt in this case will be just the company domain. So it knows using the system prompt, what it needs to do. And now the user prompt, like before, is just the variable that it needs to use to be able to do those certain things that we tell it in the system prompt. Once this is done, then we can see here that we have the citations and we have the results. So we have the snippet and a bunch of other stuff that it uses to be able to then do research on the next part of the person, which is the LinkedIn research. So same exact concept, everything else is the same. The only difference is that here, I should have put LinkedIn URL. We give it the LinkedIn URL and this is more so on a personal level, right? So you can see here, it started scraping my LinkedIn, my Gumroad, I don't know how I got to here, but my Gumroad is where I store a ton of my automations. You can see here, make.com and then it's in. If you have not checked it out, the link is up here and a bunch of other stuff like this. And so this right here does more of the personal research and this more of the company research to then be able to structure the output like this to get the date, email, lead name, company name, monthly revenue, AI interest, and potential company solutions and then decision maker as well. And this is basically us asking the AI to gather all the information and then structure it in a way where it looks like this. And we use JSON because JSON is the language that we use behind all the automations. If you don't know what JSON is, check out this video up here. I always have a video for something, so <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, now once this is done, we can see that the output here is the date, email, lead name, company name, monthly revenue, AI interest, potential company solutions and decision maker. So we can go to the next step, which is a lead scoring agent. And this right here is hooked up to the actual brain, which is the LLM, and it's hooked up to the output structure. And the only thing that we really want out of the output is a score. Now, if I go here to the actual prompt, uh, we give it the, I shouldn't give it the additional context because it's not an actual field, but we give it the output, we give it the uh, company domain, the AI interest, potential company solutions, and monthly revenue. And so based on all these fields, we're going to score it out of 100 and we give it a scoring criteria. So revenue requirement, 
zero to 30 points must be generating at least 50K per month. And this will give us um, one point, right? And so by doing that in specific, you give it a few scoring criteria, some sort of rules that it uses when giving you a score out of 100 right here. And so we say you're a lead qualification specialist for an AI agency, score this lead based on their fit for an AI implementation service. And so right here, you can see that the output is 65, which is the score of the actual lead. Now, once this is done, then we can use Google Sheets, which is a CRM that we have right here to be able to add the lead details in this row. And all we did here is just connected our Google Sheet account like this, sign in with Google, and you have that there. Then we have resource, which is sheet within the document, operation, which is what is the action that we're taking, which is appending a row, which means adding a row. Then the document will be the Google Sheet, which is the lead research analyst, and then it will be sheet one. And then all these fields are the ones that we map from here. You can see date, email, lead name, decision maker, you can find right here, company name, company name, revenue, revenue, there we go. Uh, interest summary, which is interest summary here, potential company solutions right here. And then finally we have the score, which you can get up here. And so by putting everything in one place, our team has a record of all the different leads that have submitted the form, all the different sort of revenue summaries and company names and so on, and also the score of each lead. So when we want to go back to the CRM for whatever reason, we can see all the leads that we've had in the past, all categorized by the actual uh, score. Now, what we do here at the end is we actually notify our team, but we don't want to notify our team every single time with the same exact email. We want to notify our team differently based on the type of lead. And so what we do here is we use the root, so the split, and we say, hey, if the output, so if the score, which you can find right here, output, so if the score right here is greater than or equal to 70, then we call it a hot lead. If it's greater than or equal to 40, then a warm lead. And then if it's less than 40, it will be a cold lead. And so that's how the automation works to then be able to send three different emails based on the different type of scoring that we get. In this case, the hot lead will just be an email here, which is very similar. All we have to do here is just connect our account, sign in with Google, same exact concept as before. And the actual email will be sent to $100 million peanuts at gmail.com. If you know, you know. And here we have the hot lead alert score is the actual score of the lead. And then for the email type, we can see here that we send over the company name, the lead name, the email, monthly revenue, AI interest, and recommended solutions. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this back to text so it's formatted in the right way, I think. And then, as you can see here, this is the one that it actually used. Same exact emails. The only difference is that we give the warm lead instead of hot lead. So we know just by the subject line if this lead is warm or hot, and we can also tag them. It's also one additional step that we can do is we can tag the email Maybe by having something here, we can say warm leads and we can have all the warm leads be tagged here, all the hot leads being tagged in the other place and so on. And so same exact concept here. We do the exact same thing and we get an email that looks like this warm lead score 65. And we have the full description of the actual company. And finally, we have the cold lead, which is the cold lead right here. And we send the exact same thing. I'm gonna turn this to text. All right, and if you want the full system for free so you can import it into your own NSN account, you can check the second link down below, which will take you to my free school community. You can go to the classroom section, you can go to the templates vault, and you'll be able to see the new video, which is lead research and qualification AI agent, and you can press download anything automation blueprint. And if you apply and you get in, you get access to an awesome community of over 4,000 people inside. And we have two weekly calls every single week. One is a weekly huddle, the other one is a vibe coding session. Plus we have more courses on the AI Automations 101. We have the NN10 full masterclass, the Start Your AI Agency, Templates Vaults, all the resources that we've done so far, plus all the weekly recordings and over $20,000 in discounts for softwares. Bear in mind that not everyone gets in, so please put some thoughts into your answers and I'll see you on the inside. And if you're a nine to five working professional and you are making at least 5K a month, and you wanna be able to start your own AI agency, then check the first thing down below. And check out this video up here if you wanna learn exactly how to deliver automation projects to clients step-by-step. Step. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.